This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. In remote Brazil in 2000, the world's rarest bird, just one left in the wild, and you can't get rarer than that. This parrot, Spix's macaw, makes a fascinating story, up to now. But we start in Tenerife, in the Canary Islands. Thousands of miles away from that tiny patch of trees in Brazil, the world's parrot experts and enthusiasts gathered to discuss parrots and their future. Spix's macaw is high on the agenda, a major talking point at Loro Parque. For here, on the Canary Islands in the Western Atlantic, is one of the parrot centers of the world. Every four years, it's host to some 800 parrot people, a few of whom hold the future of the distant Spix's macaw in their hands. They come from the USA, the Philippines, Australia, South Africa, Brazil, in fact, the sort of variety of countries inhabited by wild parrots themselves. Then, of course, their distribution as captives and pets is enormous. And one of the centers concerned with that is also Loro Parque. That's where everybody's heading for a four-day parrot talk-in. Will the parrots join in too? At the Loro Parque Foundation office, Spix's macaws are everywhere, as a symbol and a logo. The real birds back in Brazil and elsewhere need all the help they can get. Spix's macaw symbolizes the plight of parrots worldwide, as Yves de Soir, scientific director, knows only too well. As well as Spix's, there are the other blue macaws, hyacinth, leers, and glaucus. The glaucus is now thought to be extinct. From the archives, a sad skin of a species that man eliminated in the recent past. Also gone is the Carolina parakeet, once numbered in millions in the USA, last one seen in 1926. And a number of parakeets from Pacific and Indian Ocean islands. Several other macaw species are currently close to extinction, and the Cuban macaw is already gone, the last one shot in 1864. So what's the future for the three surviving blue macaws? From left to right, hyacinth, the least rare, the glaucus, extinct, the leers, going, going, and the little specks, nearly gone. Will it follow the glaucus? into extinction. You can't get rarer than one, can you? In other wetter forests of Brazil lives the commonest blue macaw, the hyacinth, but it's hardly abundant. As with all the macaws, they've suffered from damage to their home and the stealing of chicks and adults for the pet trade. They sometimes make endearing pets, attractive in the shop, but in many homes around the world, they become lonely, desperate birds. And when they're taken from the wild, the species suffers. So, at the moment, the hyacinth macaw might be going the way of the spixes. The scarlet macaw, perhaps the most famous of these big parrots, is also in trouble for the same reasons as the others. Again, the pet trade has a lot to answer for. Often that lineup in the pet shop is death row of birds taken from the wild. Their rainforest home and them at home in it are tourist attractions in Costa Rica, Brazil, Peru and elsewhere. Some are now being protected with that in mind, but the pressures on their habitat and on themselves is still intense. In the admiring crowd is Rosemary Lowe, the author of the book on lorries, all 53 species of them. And with her is Lars Lemperhoff, another concerned parrot enthusiast 
from Switzerland. And on both their minds is that one, one and only male Spixis macaw out there in Brazil. To the dazzling macaws of South America. This is the blue-throated macaw, a rare one from Bolivia. Playful, yes, but its plight is not so amusing. It's a critically endangered species. It has a lot in common with Spixis. During the 1980s, it was heavily trapped for the live bird trade, leaving only a small number of birds, judged to be in the region of 100. Unlike its smaller cousin, however, captive numbers are high and it breeds readily. And another rarity, the red-fronted, also from Bolivia, also endangered. With their brilliant plumage and their amusing behavior, no wonder one and a half million tourists a year flock to Loro Parque to see them close up. The birds look good there and have a pretty free lifestyle. They may well lead more stimulating lives watching the people passing by. And there's a good supply of admirers who come for a day out to this very varied display of animals and plants. So much for these attractions in Tenerife. But what about that lonely Spixis macaw far away in Brazil? To try to help him, the conference organizers are preparing a display. They want to show what's being done to try to save the world's rarest bird in the wild. SOS, save our Spix. The displays are taken to the main meeting hall, where soon everyone will gather to discuss the future of the world's parrots, among much other parrot business. But Spix's macaw will be the star of the show, linked from here at Loro Parque to a small town in Brazil. But first, the grand opening. 800 participants, parrot people, all with that interest in common, like the British-based World Parrot Trust. Some tensions, perhaps, between those who collect parrots and those who want them to stay in the wild. Spixis is part of that mix of opinion and argument. A controversial figure astride all this is Wolfgang Kiesling, a German parrot enthusiast who started Loro Parque in 1972 and is a powerful influence both here and abroad. They know his reputation. They'll soon know what's being done about Spixis. Thousands of miles away in Brazil, it's very different. The vegetation is not lush. It's not warm. It's extremely hot and overgrazed. What trees still exist may be the last individuals to survive. Their seeds will fall on barren ground to be eaten by desperate livestock. But what's this got to do with the world's rarest bird? How do goats affect Spixis macaw? Why does this man and his aspirations for a better life and better things threaten the future of a lonely male parrot? The parrot seems helpless, but not completely. In the small town of Curaçao, 
the sign welcomes you to the home of the Ararinha Azul, the local name for the Spixis Macaw. In the town square, there's a clear link to Tenerife. The theater has been renovated with many pesetas from Spanish Tenerife from Loro Parque for the Ararinha Azul. This is an exception in what is one of the poorest, driest parts of Brazil. But amazingly, a great river, the São Francisco, flows nearby. The waters reach little of the surrounding land, however, and it's along the tributaries that the Spix saga unfolds. The Ararinha Azul rescue team is led by Yara Barros. From town, the landscape is desolate and dry, a vast expanse of scrub. She's heading for those trees along the tributary, the last refuge of the Spix. This is not him. No way. He's another, back in Loro Parque, Tenerife. He's one of a small group of captive Spixes around the world, which might, might just enable the species to continue to exist. Like all parrots, he's observant, curious, watchful. And he's being watched by closed circuit TV. He's a valuable property, well guarded behind the scenes at Loro Parque. Whether the few birds kept here will contribute to a global breeding pool to save the species remains to be seen. At the conference nearby, the Spix message is being put across in no uncertain terms. The visitors see that the theater has gone ahead with money from here. The difficulty is often maintaining support and interest for a long and risky effort like this and that's true at both ends of the project. Others might be more interested in different aspects of the parrot business. It's a virtual industry, you might say an addiction. And when the addiction focuses on one species, say of Spixes, the trouble really starts. Like a rare diamond, some people become desperate to have it, and they may be rich and powerful enough to succeed. As the wild population collapses, captive breeding becomes the last resort. With some species, it's a special skill in itself. That's certainly true of the apparently doomed Spix, perhaps only to survive on a T-shirt. Breeders here compare notes on the latest techniques and equipment. Maybe some little trick will get the pair going but only that wild bird knows about life in the wild. He has the answers as long as he lives. Captive breeding is a vital backup, and so is rearing a human society that understands these problems. Visiting school children find out how chicks are bred but also, more importantly, how the species lives in the wild, how it relates to its habitat. And that's crucial in the case of Spix's macaw. Hopefully, this investment in education will result in a better future for all parrots as part of living systems. They have certain requirements, or at least things they relish, like a shower. Up to a point, that is. Plenty of things to do, places to go. 
The species that particularly concerns Loro Parque is Spixis macaw. It was discovered by Austrian naturalist Johann Baptist von Spix when he shot one in 1819. It was probably never common in its native habitat here in the dry scrubland of northeastern Brazil. Shooting didn't help, but since its discovery, its decline has been hastened by trapping and grazing by goats, sheep and cattle. In a poor region, more livestock may mean more income to buy that motorbike or whatever. More animals, less vegetation. Yara's research team has come here on a very special day. Normally, people keep well away from the spicks using the hide. In the distance, you can see the pair. But there's only supposed to be one, the male. He's actually had to pair up with a female of another species, Iligus, or blue-winged macaw, a much smaller species. A local farmer has dedicated himself to this project and knows this odd couple intimately. His help is essential today as they move to the nest tree by the river. It's here where these particular trees still survive that the Spix has hung on. It needs them, but grazing animals prevent any regeneration. As the core area became more restricted by increasing livestock, the Spix has become vulnerable to persecution, to trapping. The rarer it became, the more certain individuals craved to own one. It's a very extreme form of the parrot pet trade. This may look like that sort of activity, but it's exactly the opposite. They're placing Iligus macaw eggs in the nest hole of the mixed pair. and taking out the ones she's laid. Could they be fertile? Well, yes, at least one was, but it did not hatch. In the meantime, the Brazilian biologists will see if the pair can successfully rear a family. If they do, perhaps next time they lay, the team will swap Spix's eggs from captive birds somewhere. That's the plan. Will it work? back to the farmer's house. They discuss the plan. Over 100 families of local ranch workers have been checking on the famous pair. They're known as Spix's cowboys. It seems a far cry from this poor, overgrazed place with so many cattle and just one blue macaw to the green gardens of Loro Parque and those well-meaning and determined parrot enthusiasts. They've been trying for years to save the species and it's become a parrot soap opera. The Spix's macaw has become a symbol of rarity. If such a rare creature can be saved, maybe there's some hope for the rest of the world's endangered wildlife. But the effort and complications are daunting. Tony Pittman from England has his own Blue Macaw website and makes his own films. Here, he's feeding a young male Spix its favorite fruit from the local tree by the river. Tony's film shows just how agile and dexterous parrots can be. In 1995, this bird was lent by a Brazilian as orientation for a female that had been released here as a potential mate for the lonely male out in the wild. 
This young male inside the cage provided company for the female, and her story turned out to be quite a drama. She might have formed the perfect pair, enabling the local knowledge and skills of the male to be continued to future generations. But it was not to be. The efforts had been impressive. The big aviary, built in 1995 with Laurel Parquet Foundation money, contained the right food trees, and the female had spent over seven months in there preparing for her release. The researchers monitored her for two months after release, and she seemed to get on well with the male, though they later roosted apart. But then, disaster. She disappeared. An important center in Brazil for macaw conservation has been Sao Paulo Zoo. It's not an easy country in which to protect birds of any sort, especially rare ones, which could earn some extra cash. People here see animals differently than they do in the USA or Europe. Toys, food, animals are usable items. In a poor society, spending money, and a lot of it, on saving a rare bird would seem crazy. Much better to get it and sell it. So, the pet trade. The sort of problem faced by those trying to protect rare parrots like Spix's with a huge price on its head and these Lear's macaws. Of the three species of blue macaws surviving today, Lear's is the second rarest after the Spix's. Will it go the same way, for the same reasons? In 1990, Spix's macaws held by the Brazilians and others around the world could be entered into a globally managed population. Six years later, any undeclared birds would be confiscated, if found, that is. Meanwhile, the other blue macaws, hyacinth and lyres, continued to decline, perhaps heading the same way as Spix's. Their nest trees were easy targets. Either poachers climbed up or maybe cut the whole tree down, perhaps spoiling a traditional nesting site. The demand from across the world for parrots seemed insatiable. Animal traffic has now become the biggest illegal business after drugs, and parrots feature high on the list of desirable animals. Poachers steal the chicks by cutting into the nest cavity, and they're off to the local trader, then the exporter, and ultimately to the pet shop or collector. Or perhaps not. Now, artificial protected nest boxes are being put up where macaws survive. For example, here in Costa Rica, where the country's president himself joined in. The Spix was brought to its numerical knees, finally, by human greed. It remains the example conservationists look to when they discuss the future of the world's parrots and what is happening to the planet they and we inhabit. They had a traditional nest hole, but then they moved to an area which was more accessible to people and difficult to warden. So the scientists blocked up that hole, which brought them back to this area where they've nested again. But will the unique knowledge the Spix has, will that be passed on to his chicks, if any? The few trees are still standing, but the goats are still eating and breeding. A new Spix's Macaw School is built. The renovated theater shows parrot puppets, and the people are proud of their bird that's become so famous, especially that female released for the male in March 1995. What next? The project out there with the cattle and goat problem. Yara briefs her team at the field station. Their funding and support from abroad and their own country of Brazil is critical. Politically, it can be tricky. Who owns these birds? Who's in charge? The fate of a whole species lies in the hands of a few. And these 
belong to a biologist who's helping with the next stage of the project to save the bird in the wild by radio tracking. At the big aviary, the reintroduction facility, captive hatched Illigus macaws, the same species as the Spix's male's mate, were brought in from Loro Parque in Tenerife. A total of nine were later released to the wild and tracked by radio. The idea is that it's a rehearsal for possible later release of the more valuable captive reared Spixes. Remember, they'll have no knowledge of the place, the food, or the predators. Only the one wild male Spix has that. Time perhaps to summarize this soap opera, partly from a parrot's point of view, and to update it. The lonely male mates with a different, small, green illigus macaw. That's all there is, and they seem fine. One day, he gets a surprise. Another, more his type, turns up, is released nearby, and they get on well. But the previous other species mate is still around. It's a parrot triangle. The honeymoon lasts a month. And then the new female Spix disappears, found dead by a cowherder and only revealed much later, afraid to say at the time for fear the project might stop. Back with his original Illigus mate, they find a good home, but then have to move. And all the while, they notice more people around. Some visited their home. It was a disturbing day. To cut a long story short, life got tougher. It was more difficult to find food. They had to fly further for it, and more people and more animals appeared. So this was the way it went. A species reduced originally by trapping, but then helped by international efforts, dedicated farmers and biologists, but eventually threatened by the gradual attrition of the landscape by livestock put there by man. And then, at about 19 years old, the male Spix disappeared forever. Announced in December 2000, it was the end of that bird, the end of an era. The species was extinct in the wild. But there is still hope elsewhere, far from Brazil. In Switzerland, Roland Messer is an architect. He designs houses and loves parrots, especially Spix's macaws. He's on his way home, through the snowy Swiss countryside, to his very special collection of tropical birds. Black swans from Australia, on ice. The place is well protected. The parrots that Roland has acquired are valuable, and in particular the Spixes. Since the death of the wild male in Brazil, his group have been even more important.
He got them from another Swiss breeder for a lot of money. But their true value to the species is their potential to breed. The future for the Spix's macaw is in the hands of just a few individuals. There are now about 60 birds in captivity, here in Switzerland, in Loro Parque in Tenerife, in the Philippines, and a few in Brazil. They've now been bred in captivity in Brazil, and now here in Switzerland, the first chick in this group. And they keep on coming, from then to now and on, and winning. And a fantastic surprise, a single Spix, glimpsed on camera phone video by two local girls. There was great excitement back at the school, but could it have been released or escaped? The creek has been bought by parrot enthusiasts from abroad. The livestock removed, the vegetation is growing back. So from around the world, Brazil, Spain, Germany, to Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, help and more Spix chicks are on their way. Hopefully this rarest of birds will make a comeback with a lot of help from their friends.